there everyone and I thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another episode of My Orchid Adventure. Now unfortunately you may be able to tell that my voice is a little bit off whack here. I am still under the weather and still kind of recouping but definitely did not want that to stop me from making videos just for you guys so we're gonna keep the party rolling here regardless. Okay, so in my last video, I did give you guys an update on my Vanda pollination propagation and told you exactly how my Vandas were doing. I also talked to you guys about how there may be times where you might have to hold off on pollinating, where you may want to store the pollen for the right time and also the right orchid. Okay, so say for instance, this particular Vanda right here is one of your most beloved and favorite orchids and you want to use this Vanda as a pollinator to cross-pollinate another orchid. But you have a dilemma because this particular orchid, you want to cross-pollinate with this particular orchid. And unfortunately, this orchid is not in spike as of yet. And because the time sequence is totally off on these two Vandas right here, we indeed are going to have to find and resort to another method where we can savor the flavor. And in this case, we are actually saving the pollen and storing them for later use. Now, it is important for you to know that there are different methods and also different media and different materials that you can use to store pollen. And you are just really gonna have to use your intuition and also know your conditions of which one would be best for you. Whichever method that you decide to go with also can determine the lifespan of that pollen. So the length of time that is needed can also dictate exactly which method would be best for you. And there are actually three ways in which you can store pollen and just depending on how long you need to store that pollen for will determine exactly which method you want to use. And a good way to remember exactly which method would be good for what length of time is actually the fact that the colder the method is, the longer amount of time you can store that pollen. So one of the methods are to keep the pollen in room temperature. Another would be to keep it refrigerated, and yet another would be to actually freeze it. So again, the colder the method, the longer amount of time you can store the pollen. Now they do say if you keep the pollen in room temperature, then the pollen would be viable for about three months. And if you were to refrigerate it, then it can actually last for about a year. And if you were to freeze it, it can actually last for a couple of years. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about some of the materials that we can use because they can really vary. Now, some people have been known to use regular pieces of paper. Some people use wax paper, tin foil, paper towel, tissue and also believe it or not toilet paper and also some storing containers would be some flask some tubes perhaps a jar perhaps a plastic container a ziploc bag again it goes on and on and on and you just have to find out exactly which one you think would work best for you but there is one thing that stays the same regardless to what you decide to use and that is the fact that you definitely want to make sure that you are storing it within a dry container some people actually use silica gel packets just to eliminate any type of moisture growth within whatever container or material you decide to store the pollen in because we do have to keep in mind with that moisture comes the risk of contamination with bacteria or fungus growth that can literally terminate the lifespan of that pollen. And that is why it is so important to eliminate any type of moisture within the container or material that you are going to be containing that pollen in. And these materials are what we're going to be using today in our storing our pollen project. As you can see, it's very simple. This is an actual plastic Tupperware container with its lid. Also, we have paper towel in here and we have the toothpicks that we're going to be removing the pollen from the blossom. And that is it. And that's all, folks. And because we're not going to be storing our pollen for very long, I wouldn't even say a month, we can actually elect to keep our pollen within room temperature. So that is actually the best method for us to go with and I believe is also the easiest method as well. 
Okay, folks, and this is the particular blossom in specific that we will be taking that pollen and also storing that pollen from. And just to get a better understanding of how this is going to work, this right here at the very top of the column, that is called the anther cap, or also the pollen cap. And that is the covering that actually hides the pollen and also protects the pollen as well. So underneath, we're gonna see the pollen. Now on that pollen, it also has a sticky pad so if anything or anyone or any creature whatever intrudes into this area that pollen sticky surface or sticky pad will actually stick to the intruder in which in this case it is going to be this toothpick so after we remove the pollen cap we're gonna work this in there and hopefully we can get that pollen to attach and then we're gonna take it and put it into our container simple as that folks right at least that's what we say here we go okay there it is actually it's right in there can you see that let's see how close we can get this right there you see that and that is the pollen and here it is folks you can get a clearer view of it now and as I actually maneuvered it into this area the anther cap fell right off so you can get a clearer and more visible view of those two masses of waxy pollen. And now all there is to do is to store it. And all I'm gonna do is simply open up this paper towel right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and sit the toothpick and also the pollen right in here. Just like that, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and put this over it, kind of close it in there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and seal it. And then we're gonna go ahead and put this inside of the house in a shadier area and a little bit cooler from the outdoors as well. We definitely are gonna keep this out of direct sunlight just to sustain us longevity there. And that is all we're gonna do, folks. That is all, and we'll wait it out until this little spiky wikey right here is all grown up and ready to bloom, and then we'll pollinate this tatsurai. But it is such a shame that this gorgeous and striking bloom right here would go to waste, and I don't think I wanna do that. So let's go ahead and pollinate this one, just for GP. And we still have a Vanda Bloom from this Vanda Gold Kultana crossed with a Vanda Tessalata. And as you can see, it's a very beautiful blossom. And it also has so many spikes because this blooms continuously. So indeed, this has many beautiful traits along with it being fragrant. So I think this might be a nice cross. Okay, so let's do it. Come on down. There it goes. There it is. You can see this one really well. And here we are again. And I wanted to show you the stigmatic surface right there. That's where our pollen has to go. And as you can see, they're almost puzzle pieces where this almost fits right in. Let's see how easy it is for us to do this. Come on in. Come on in, little guy. There it goes. Oh my goodness. It is such a workout trying to get these in here because of that sticky pad that wanted to stick to the surface of the toothpick. But indeed, I think we got it in there and it should be good to go now. And the ovaries are actually back here. So indeed, if the pollination is successful, it'll cause this area to swell up and this will actually become the seed pod right here. So let's keep our fingers crossed and in a couple of days, we'll be able to see if it is a successful pollination. And guess what, just for safety, in case our Cindy Banks is a dud, you know, the one that we're storing, we're gonna go ahead and store this one as well, just for safety. So we'll have this one as well that we're gonna store. Okay, and there they both are. This is the Mimi Palmer and this is the Kultana Fragrance. We're gonna go ahead and again, cover them up, kind of seal them to the side with the paper towel. And then we're gonna seal them up 
and store them within a shady area in the house. And there you have it folks, that is a complete how to store your pollen for a later date wrap. I thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another episode of My Orchid Adventures. And I also want to know from you guys, if you have experience with storing pollen and then later were able to successfully pollinate another orchid, please be sure to let us know exactly how you did it and post those comments below. I do hope you guys learned something new and I hope you liked this video and if you did, please be sure to like like, share and also subscribe also join me on Facebook as well at my orchid adventures and as you guys already know I do truly love and appreciate you guys all I will see you guys later and I'll also grow with you guys later as well bye bye for now Mwah.